Let's examine the structure of these carbonyl compounds, and we'll establish some general patterns of reactivity between them. First things first, we need to remember that a uh, sp2 center, like in an aldehyde or ketone, that carbon, remember, is sp2, which means it's trigonal planar. So we're going to see as a result of that, when we have uh, nucleophiles attacking these, since these are pretty good electrophiles, um, when nucleophiles attack, I'm going to just distinguish that arrow there, um, that they can attack from either side. So just remember that these are planar compounds. So with that, you can have either superfacial or uh, interfacial attack. That means above or below. <laughs> Uh, and so uh, either way, you'll be able to attack from either up or down as your nucleophile. Generally speaking, when we're looking at the uh, kind of electrophilicity of aldehydes and ketones, we're going to see, generally speaking, aldehydes are more reactive. They are more reactive than ketones. And that's be, that'll be something very important for us to remember, because if we have both an aldehyde and a ketone present in a compound, if we put just one equivalent of our reactant in, uh, or reagent rather, uh, whatever we're doing to this, uh, it's going to preferentially attack the aldehyde. And there's a couple of reasons for this. Reason number one is steric. Aldehydes have hydrogens. Hydrogens are smaller than alkyl groups. So it's simply easier for nucleophiles to come in because you just have a hydrogen on, on at least one side of your aldehyde. So because uh, H's are smaller than alkyl groups, steric reasons favor aldehydes being attacked. Secondly, we understand that alkyl groups Uh, are weak electron donating groups. Electron donating groups through hyperconjugation, right? So as a result, they add electron density. And therefore, it's a worse electrophile. Remember, we want electrophiles to be kind of more positive. Uh, we want them to have low electron density so that they can be attacked by something else. So because alkyl groups are weak electron donating groups, because they're adding electron density to our molecule, uh, the ketones are worse electrophiles. So uh, because the alkyl groups, ketones have those, right? Aldehydes may have just one, uh, but ketones have to have two. So because of that, those two reasons, aldehydes are going to be more reactive as electrophiles. And if we consider what uh, an aldehyde or ketone might be as as a nucleophile or as an electrophile, um, I'm going to just use an aldehyde. I will probably just use aldehydes or ketones interchangeably throughout this chapter because they will behave very much the same way. We just have to remember that aldehydes are more reactive than ketones are. If we take a look at the resonance, of course, we will see, don't forget your lone pairs, that we have a site of electron deficiency at uh, that position uh, of the carbon. So the carbon has uh, got, at least through resonance, a, a positive charge. What we also need to consider is that there's also this uh, pretty strong dipole between the oxygen and the carbon. So even in the double bond drawn state, uh, we see that the uh, uh, the dipole there still has a pretty strong po partial positive charge on that uh, carbon, and we have a po partial negative on the oxygen. In this vitter ionic form, though the fully ionized one, we see a full positive charge on the carbon, and that's the site of electrophilicity. So 
this basically is a big old sign saying attack here. So, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, nucleophiles will go to that site and that's where um, nucleophilic attack will happen. <clears throat> In terms of nucleophilic attack, we're going to have two conditions that we're going to be very consistent with our mechanisms with throughout this chapter and the preceding ones. We can generally have a base catalyzed uh, mechanism, base catalyzed addition. This will be a nucleophil nucleophilic addition to a ketone or aldehyde. And that might look something like this. Pretty simple mechanism. We have our aldehyde or ketone. We've got our dear friend, the nucleophile, whatever that may be. We will have our molecule open up its carbonyl and uh, accept the nucleophile, whatever that may be. Maybe a Grignard reagent, for example. We're going to assume our nucleophile will be negatively charged, generally speaking. The important part here is that with base catalyzed processes, we only have negative charges and neutral molecules. We do not see positive charges hanging around here. Uh, so in, in uh, base catalyzed processes, we see negatives only. We don't see positives. So with that in mind, we are going to go ahead and find a happy proton source. Generally speaking, this will be the water wash that you can do afterwards. So for example, after your Grignard attacks, uh, you'll have you know this with the, the MIGBUR, uh, which will be positive. That'll be hanging on there, counterbalancing it. But once you do the water wash, me mechanistically, we're going to have it grab a proton. We're going to lose more of our base. And we will end up now having our protonated species with our new nucleophile added, whatever that happens to be. So the important things for base catalyzed processes is that we cannot have strong acids pre present in a base mechanism. Um, just can't, right? Because the base would react with it. So strong acids are generally things that will be positively charged like OH3 plus, right, hydronium. Be weird to say it that way, but H3O plus, right, is, is, is a strong acid. So we, we can't have those present in a base catalyzed mechanism. So that generally means that we're not gonna be generating positive charges throughout our mechanism. So notice in all these, we have a negative thing adding on to our neutral molecule. Our neutral molecule therefore becomes negative. We attack another neutral molecule, producing a negative molecule and a new neutral molecule. So everything's either negative or neutral in a base catalyzed mechanism. So generally speaking, that means we do not see positive charges here. The other mechanism, general mechanism we'll see is the acid catalyzed one. Uh, so in the acid catalyzed nucleophilic addition, This will be the opposite. We're only going to see positive charges. We will not see negatives here. So here we go. In the acid catalyzed process, we're going to use just generic H3O plus. The first step is going to be protonation. For acid catalyzed mechanisms in particular, since these are more common, the first step will always be a protonation and the last step will always be a deprotonation. So our ketone or aldehyde has gone, a gone ahead and grabbed the proton, now giving that uh, oxygen a positive charge. Of course, if we resonate this, we'll see that that um, that will end up with the carbocation not next to a negative charge, 
So this is in fact an extremely strong electrophile, much stronger so than a regular um, aldehyde or ketone. So um, that's something special about this particular mechanism. This is a super strong electrophile. So we're actually able to use pretty weak nucleophiles as a result with this. And so uh, here comes our nucleophile, speaking of which. Generally speaking, our nucleophile will be neutral because we don't want to have negative charges here. Otherwise, they'll just grab an acid in doing so. I mean, it, it depends. You can have a negative nucleophile if it's a very weak base. So uh, you can't have strong bases present. Uh, but we'll say that this nucleophile is protic. Doesn't really matter. But what can happen here? Our nucleophile attacks, pops open our ketone or aldehyde. In doing so, we will now have an OH up there, and then we have our nucleophile with a proton. Our nucleophile will now be positively charged. And here comes our dear friend, the water, which is a catalyst. We've got to regenerate it. Is going to go ahead and uh, restore our nucleophile, whatever it may be. Again, this is just our general mechanism. We regenerate our catalyst and we will have our hydroxide. So notice again here, everything had positive charges or neutral. We can have some negatives, but they have to be for very weak bases. So, I mean, it, it's just generally the case that we don't see negatives typically with an acid catalyzed process. Um, but the idea here is the same, that in an acid catalyzed process, no strong bases allowed. So generally, we, we do not see negative charges. Again, I don't want to say that these are, you know, all or nothing rules. If you have something like a weak base, like, um, like I minus or something, and it's the weakest possible base there is, but it's a negative, you know, it's fine. That one's allowed to be negative, right? Because it's not going to be a strong base. So you can have negatives as long as they are very weak. You can't have something like hydroxide in an acid catalyzed mechanism. So generally, we only see positive charges in acid mechanisms, and we only see negatives in base mechanisms, general rules. Notice in this mechanism, our first step was protonation of our ketone or aldehyde. I'm just going to say ketone right now. Nucleophilic attack, then deprotonation of our nucleophile. Uh, regenerating our catalyst. So um, those are the general mechanisms we're going to see. Throughout this, we're going to look at different types of nucleophiles adding on to these aldehydes and ketones. We'll look at carbon nucleophiles, oxygen nucleophiles, nitrogen nucleophiles, hydrogen, sulfur, all sorts of fun uh, elements that are adding on to our, our carbonyl compounds. And so in the next video, we'll explore the first one of those.